Good news, guys. Looks like we were worried about the theocratic takeover of the Supreme Court a little prematurely because as it happens, we can solve that whole problem with one simple trick. Turns out all we have to do is get some Muslim teachers, Wiccan teachers, and Satanic teachers to lead kids in prayer too. And then the theocrats will see the error of their ways and quickly seek to restore the balance of church-state separation. Trust me, I read it on a meme. So for those of you who are better able to control their social media addiction than myself, I should clarify, there are a number of viral posts that are making their rounds on Facebook, Twitter, etc. that make some form of that point. Right, like they'll say something along the lines of all the Christians are celebrating now that the SCOTUS made it legal for teachers and coaches to lead students in prayer, but just wait until the teacher is leading them in prayers to Osmodius, the demon of lust or whatever. Right, the, the implication is that somehow the issue will be mitigated by reminding Christians that turnabout is fair play. And look, I'm not asking that memes capture the nuance of an issue. For the sake of humor, one must often generalize, exaggerate, or otherwise oversimplify. But when you present or share this argument, you're doing a lot more than that. You're actually confusing the issue, and for a number of reasons. See, it, it turns out the whole turnabout is fair play thing doesn't work when you're talking about minority rights. You follow that road long enough, it leads you to the doctrine of separate but equal. The whole point is that the power dynamic only works one way. Like one of the viral posts imagines a world where the coach at the heart of this case was named Ahmed Abdallah instead of Joe Kennedy and asks, you know, how the justices might have ruled in that case. But that hypothetical relies on the theocrats' bullshit narrative about this case to begin with, right? Because nobody gives a flying fuck if Joe Kennedy kneels down and prays at the end of a football game or, or in the middle of one. Shit, Tim Tebow did that all the fucking time. You see it constantly when players score touchdowns or get big plays or get injured or whatever. But what Coach Kennedy did was lead his students in prayer. He went to the team and he said, I, the guy who will be deciding how much playing time you get and what position you play, would like you to know that if any of you would want to join me in professing their love for Jesus Christ, I'll be right over here. And then he gathered players from the other team and he announced this shit before the game started so he could invite parents and, and spectators to join him on the field after the game. The end result, or at least the problematic aspect of it, is the exclusion of all the non-Christians. These mass exhibitions of Christianity serve to isolate players and students of minority faiths or no faith. They're displays of social dominance that undermine the sense of belonging that students deserve, even if they're Muslim, Jewish, Hindu, atheist, whatever. And they put a none too subtle pressure on students who are on the fence about religion, which one of those potential religions comes with the most social benefits. None of this would be an option for Coach Abdallah. Right? If a Muslim coach asked his students who would like to join him in Muslim prayers in the middle of the field, few, if any, students or spectators would join him. And if they did, they'd be the ones come away feeling more isolated because of it. Right, Without the majority behind you, the display would be worse than impotent. But that might not even be the most egregious misconception undergirding that meme, because to play along with the idea that this ruling would allow an equal right for Muslims or Hindus or Asmodians to lead their students in prayer, you have to ignore the obfuscation that the decision was built on to begin with. Right? The Supreme Court never ruled that it was okay for faculty to lead students in prayer. They ruled that no such thing ever happened. Right. Despite the pictorial evidence that Sonia Sotomayor included in the fucking dissent. Basically, they ruled that Ingrid Bergman was imagining those gas lights dimming and brightening the whole time. They presented the case as though Kennedy got fired for kneeling in a private prayer after the game and entirely ignoring the fact that nobody was taking issue with that part. And that's so much worse than simply ruling that there's nothing wrong with teachers leading their students in prayer. Not that that's not bad. This is just way fucking worse because as the meme suggests, such a rule would apply across the board. And while that might not arm everyone in the fight equally, it would at least arm everyone. I mean, like, it's hard to imagine a Muslim teacher in the U.S. risking their job and inviting even greater discrimination and demonization of their religion just to prove this rhetorical point, even if it could have had a similar effect, which it can't. But Christians are far from the united in their core beliefs, right? If, if the ruling explicitly allowed for teacher-led prayers, it probably wouldn't take too long for the whole Catholic Protestant thing or the works faith thing or the young earth, old earth shit to bubble up to the surface and prompt a review. But what they actually said is if you're sufficiently inoffensive to the majority, we will pretend it never fucking happened. 
The deception at the heart of the case effectively circumvents all of that shit and insulates the violation against any kind of theocratic jujitsu we might come up with. And I get that most of the people sharing these memes are doing so with the best intentions. I get that they're not really suggesting that Coach Abdallah go out there and lead his players in a Muslim prayer, but even pretending like they could for the purposes of the joke undercuts the seriousness of this issue. It pretends that there's still some kind of innate sense of basic equality at work with this court. It pretends that their justifications lead to their conclusions instead of the other way around. It pretends that the minority rights were collateral damage rather than the target. And it pretends that we can win this fight by appealing to the concept of fair play. The longer it takes to jettison those misconceptions, the longer it'll be before we can start fighting back.